Number 37. Consider the decomposition of red mercury 2 oxide under standard state conditions. And then they give us the balanced equation here. Now for letter A, is it, it says, is this decomposition spontaneous under standard state conditions? Okay, so first things first, I'm going to write the equation a little bit bigger just so that we can work with it. So the equation that we're going to use is two HDOs, and that's the solid, that's the red color. And this decomposes into two mercuries, two HDs, that's a liquid. And then we get out just an O2, and that's a gas. Okay, beautiful. Now, is this decomposition spontaneous? There's only, uh, I want to say, I mean, technically there's two ways that you can find if a equation is spontaneous or not. But we're basically talking about standard state conditions. So I'm thinking of free energy, right? If you're spontaneous, that means that your delta G value, the Gibbs free energy, that's the one that tells you if you're spontaneous or not. That means that your delta G value has to be a negative value. It's gotta be less than zero. So that's what we're looking for here, right? And I wrote that down, down here. If your reaction is spontaneous, it's just gotta be less than zero. That just means that it's a negative value. If it's greater than zero, it's non-spontaneous. And if it's equal to zero, it's at equilibrium. So being spontaneous, delta G equals a negative. But I don't see any delta G values here, right? But they did tell us that we were at standard state conditions. Standard state conditions means that we can go on the back of a textbook and get the delta G values to use to solve this equation. And if we're using standard state conditions, I'm solving for a delta G notch. Anytime that you see that notch in the upper right-hand corner, that just means that you're using the textbook numbers, the appendix values. So that's exactly what I did. I went in the back of the textbook to find out what those delta G values are. So for HGO, uh, solid, red, negative 48.5, HG liquid by itself uh, is a zero, now I'm looking at the 205.2 and I say, wait a minute, I'm in delta G. Delta G is for any elemental substances, all diatomics are elemental substances, right? They're natural. They have zero for their delta G value. So I apologize for that one. It should have been just a zero. You could always go in the back of your textbook to, to see that it is there, that it will be zero. Now what I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna clean this up and blow this little chart away because we don't need it anymore. And now, what are we gonna do to find out the total delta G for the whole entire reaction? Well, we have one formula, right? And that's one right here. It's the delta G for your whole entire reaction, Rx and his reaction, equals the sum, right? That symbol means sum, aka you're gonna add up all the products and subtract from the sum of all your reactants, right? So let's see here. Are these numbers are going to be different or are they gonna be the same? Well, that goes by the balanced equation. It's your coefficients. You had two HGOs, two HGs, and keep in mind that there was only one O2. These values are only for one of each. So it's just good practice to just multiply all your values by your coefficient. I'm gonna multiply the negative 58.5 times two. Obviously two times zero is zero, but just writing there just to show you. And then this would be times by one. Now it's the sum, literally it's HG plus O2. So I would just have to add these two numbers together, but zero plus zero is just zero. Now I'm just gonna do this math. So negative 58.5 times two, I get negative 117. Maybe I'll throw in that zero in there for sig fig purposes. But now we're ready to rock and roll. Delta G for the whole entire reaction equals products minus reactants, zero minus negative 117.0. Minus a negative number is positive, right? So my delta G for my whole entire reaction is actually 117.0 kilojoules. 
right? You're multiplying these numbers by moles. So that's why the moles in the denominator gets canceled out. Okay, so unfortunately, we do not have a negative value. Remember, spontaneous means that it has to be a negative. This is a positive value. So is the decomposition spontaneous under standard state conditions? No, it's not spontaneous. So all of this is letter A. And what I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna bring this over a little bit, just so that I have a little bit of room for part B. Okay, so now, above what temperature does the reaction become spontaneous? So this one is pretty interesting. We want this equation to become spontaneous, right? And in order to do that, you're gonna jack up the temperature, right? So we wanna know that cutoff, because remember on a number line, you have negative values, and then if you keep going, you're gonna reach zero, and then if you keep going some more, you're gonna reach positive values. All your negatives are gonna be spontaneous. Maybe I'll just put spawn, right? So all your negative values are spontaneous. Meanwhile, all your positive values for delta G are non-spontaneous. So where's the cutoff between spontaneous and non-spontaneous? It's right at zero. That's the flip you're going to find out what temperature it is when the flip happens, because anything below is spontaneous, anything above, even the smallest positive number, still classified as not spontaneous. So we wanna find out what that, that temperature is when the delta G equals zero, because then we know above that temperature, you're getting spontaneous. So we now, have the key. We're solving for delta G, but we're looking for a temperature. Above what temperature does the reaction become spontaneous? Now, in order for this part to work, I have to actually get rid of part A because I don't have enough room to work with here. But what I'm going to do is I'm just going to take the answer. So if we wanted, here was the answer. That's why it's no, right? Spontaneous. Uh, it's non-spontaneous because it's a positive number. And then all of this is going bye-bye, unfortunately. So bye-bye, <laughs> boop. And now I'm just going to pull this over and we'll just put B over here, right? Now, now we're dealing with delta G and T. So now I think of a formula that has delta G and T in it, right? Delta G and temperature. And there's only one formula, right? It's delta G equals delta H minus T delta S. There's your G and there's your temperature, right? But the thing is, is that, ugh, they didn't give us delta H and they did not give us delta S. So we have to find them, unfortunately. But what I did was I went into the back of the textbook to get those standard state conditions for you. So everything is right here. There we go. So now, now we're now we're talking, right? Here's all the delta H values for each individual component, and the same thing for the S's, because just like we did before with products minus reactants, you could do them for your delta H's and you could do them for your S values, products minus reactants. So we have to do the delta H one, have to do the S one, and then I could plug it into this equation. So let's do delta H first, right? So delta H for the whole entire reaction, remember, is going to be products minus reactants. So take those values that we found and multiply them by the coefficients. So I have two, I have one, and I'm going to take this and times it by two. Now maybe what I'll do is I'll just drop this a little bit down just so that I have a little room here. But, um, oh, what happened here? I think there was a decimal here. Okay, so zero plus zero, that's still gonna be zero for the delta H. Two times negative 90.83, I get negative, 
let's see, negative 181.66. Now I'm going to throw it in, products minus reactants, right? So product was zero minus reactants, negative 181.66. Okay, so I have delta G, or actually delta H for the whole entire reaction is zero minus a negative is a positive. That would just be 181.66. Units here are kilojoules. Okay, so I now have the delta H value that I'm gonna use. So just keep in mind, we have the delta G, that was zero. We just found the delta H. We're solving for the temperature. Let's just find out that delta S, right? So let's do the same thing for delta S. So delta S for the whole entire reaction is products minus reactants. So multiply by your coefficients. There was two HGs, there was one O2, and there was two HGOs, right? Add them up. So I'm going to literally plug this into the calculator. Two times 75.9 plus 205. Point two, and I get 357. So you get 357 on this side. And on the right side, you get two times 70.29. So I get 140.58. Okay, delta S is products minus reactants, right? So we got 357 minus 140.58. Okay, delta S for the whole entire reaction is 357 minus 140.58. And I get 216.42. Wonderful, now keep in mind that the S values are joule per Kelvin. Right, we get rid of the moles because that's what we times by the coefficients. But now there's a discrepancy here because I'm using kilojoules for H and G, but I have joules for S. The S, the entropy value, is always a little bit messed up, so we just have to fix it. So the easiest is to just convert those joules into kilojoules, and maybe I will go down here. So joules to kilojoules, kilojoules per Kelvin, all you have to do is divide by 1,000. Or take the decimal, go three spots to the left. It's all the same stuff. So this would be now 0 0.21642. And that's the number that we're going to plug in for delta S. So here we go. Delta G we said was 0. Right, zero kilojoules. So zero equals my H value, 181.66 minus X, that's the T, times 0 0.21642. Let's solve, right? Got to get X by itself. So I can subtract 181.66 on both sides. Oop. Negative 181.66, this cancels out. Zero minus 181.66 is a negative 181.66. And this will now equal negative, or I'll, I'll pull the number in the front, 0 0.21642 times x, right? But it's a negative value. So I'm just going to divide by that value. Divide by negative 0.21642. Negative 21642. This cancels out. And now you're left with X, which was the temperature. So let's see. Oh, I actually have negative 181.66. So I'm going to grab that, press enter. And then I'm going to just divide by negative point 21642. Right? 21642, 21642. Perfect. Enter. Whoa. That's a, that's a huge temperature. That means that it won't be spontaneous in our life, right? I mean... 800 Kelvin, 839 Kelvin, that's nuts. 839, eh, I guess we'll give it three sig figs, right? 
839 Kelvin. So that's the that's the cutoff point, right? So above what temperature? We found out that cut the cutoff temperature. The cutoff temperature was 839. So anything above that temp is going to be spontaneous. So above what temp? 839 Kelvin. If you wanted to get Celsius, right? All you'd have to do is just subtract 273. Right? I mean, it didn't say, so you could just take 839, subtract 273, just to get like an idea. Yeah, 566 Celsius. That's nuts. But either way, it's the same answer. And this one is done. Woohoo. That one was a big one, guys. I really hope this helped. Thank you so much for viewing the video. Subscribe to the channel. Tell your friends, tell your classmates about this cool channel. We also have physics and math videos on the channel at the moment with more subjects coming your way. Hopefully we can help you with anything you got, right? Just check back. We'll be putting more stuff out. Okay, bye-bye.